All right, so I'm a little nervous, but whatever. It's my experience, and I'm going to talk about it. I want to. I feel like I need to. I usually keep all this stuff secret. I don't share what I deal with or go through because, you know, we've usually encountered judgment when it comes to stuff like this. Judgment, um, doubt, lots of doubt, criticism, you know, whatever. But you know what? I'm in a stage where I'm like, you know what? I am who I am. I do what I do. I don't give one what people say or think about it. So whatever. And I wrote it all down just so I wouldn't forget. So I'm already getting hot and like flustered. So whatever. So it started in 2016. Um, Tyler Henry became popular on TV in Hollywood. Like I'd already kind of sort of heard about him uh, from people that went to school with him. And, you know, whatever. It was intriguing. And I was just so compelled by what he could do. And I was just like, God, I want to meet him. It was just like this strong feeling of like one day, one day. I don't know how, but one day. And then his mom used to shop in Save Mart. And I would talk to her about it sometimes. And she ended up giving me a card with his picture on it that he signed. And on the back's like his booking information. And I packed it away. And I just found it two weeks ago. <laughs> Two weeks ago, two. The number will be relevant in a minute. So I'm like, man, I really need to hit him up. I at least try. I know he books out forever, but like, whatever, I should try. And then I forgot about it. So then let's fast forward to Friday, which is two days ago, Friday the 20th. My friend texted me, hey, I got tickets to this psychic, and I'm thinking, like, it's some lady, local, like, gonna, in a little place with 50 people, right? And I'm like, um, well, who is it? You know, just curious, whatever. And then she texts me back, it's, his name's Tyler Henry, and I'm like, I, like, almost threw my phone out the window at work. Like, seriously? I've been dying to see him for years. I just found his card two weeks ago and now I'm being invited to one of his shows right and then my friend who invited me um she was like worried about being sick so it was like up in the air whether she could go or not but I'm like no you're with me in this journey of consciousness whatever you know so I'm like you're I need you with me like you're my support for this like it's not even the fact that like I wanted her support because I did not know this would be about me. I thought it was more so about her because of stuff going on in her life. And I was like, no, we need to do this together. Like, I felt that so strongly. So she ended up going. She was fine yesterday. Um, we had a great day. Oh, so we left at 2. Here again, the number 2. Yesterday was the 22nd. 10 22 22, aka um, in this conscious spiritual world, the 22 22 portal, right? So. I keep seeing the number two and four all day, even six. Two in numerology is patience. 22 is intuition. 222 is um, faith, love, or faith, trust, intuition, patience, like all of it, you know. And then four is perseverance. 44 is the environment or the situation, the, the um, you know, all that. Uh, nature of what's going on. And then um, six is love. Six and six is healing, and you know, more than one six is lots of love. So they say six is a bad number. No, it means love. So anyway, saw all those numbers all day. And then the the clouds, like there was just clouds, and it was a gorgeous drive. The entire drive was gorgeous. Like we just it was beautiful. And then we ended up getting into town in Santa Inez. Never been there. And it was so gorgeous. But on the way in, this song called Secret Level came on. And I'm like, um, the last time I heard this song and it meant something, I was participating in something else that felt like a secret level. So I notated that with my friend and I told her about my situation with that song. And I usually skip it because it, it's on so much. I just skip, 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 skip because I'm tired of it. Yesterday, I'm like, let me listen to it, right? And then as I'm listening to it, I'm like, uh, I feel like... This is hinting at something. I'm going to get something out of the show. I can feel it. Like, he's going to say something that I'm going to resonate with or I'm going to learn something from what he's saying. And 
that's what I felt. So we get there and we go eat at this restaurant um, just outside of the area where the casino is. He was at the Chumash Casino and we ate in town at this place called the Red Barn. And it felt weird in there, but at the same time, the food was bomb. Like it was so good. And then my number on my receipt was 2222. I'll post that with this video. But my freaking thing said 2222. And right underneath it, the date of 22 of 22 was a, it's just, oh, so there's that. Okay. And then we get to the casino and we locate where we're supposed to go. We're early. So then we go to the shops, whatever, hang out. We buy this cool, actually it's right here, this thing. It's just, we were playing with these, you know, having fun. And then we go outside because I'm tired of the smoke. And we just go outside. We hang out. People watch. It's nice out there. We get some selfies in. We go inside finally and we get seated. And I think I'll, I, I posted a picture on Facebook, I think. But I'll still post it with this. We, so here's like the floor. And then back here, it's like elevated seating. And then the sound guy is right there. We were right behind the sound guy. So no one was in front of us. We had all the leg room we wanted. And I was on the edge too. So I wasn't, I was only next to my friend, no one else. So that was perfect. And then he started the show. He showed a couple of videos of, from his Netflix series. And um, he had highlighted one even where I guess this lady, I forget who she even is. She had some vegan bakery, but her dog showed up, right? And I was like, that's funny. Like, he's like, I've never really had a dog show up. That was my first one. But animals can show up, right? So I'm just like, okay, cool. He starts reading this lady and her hers was compelling. He was like, Joshua, Joshua. Like right away, he was saying Joshua. And at the very end of her reading, she's like, I have Joshua on my shirt. And I'm like, <gasps> like, it was cool. So a couple other people go. And then in between readings he would be asked a question so he could kind of shake off the previous readings energy so he did this one question and um let me make sure i didn't forget anything before i start this uh okay so i'm sitting there thinking if my loved ones come in i was thinking of my grandpa and then sort of about my bio dad and then my cat Th those were the three i'm like okay you three specifically want you in here if like if this says if this is gonna happen then that's what I want <sighs> and then I'm like my grandpa's name is Lyle so like if he says Lyle I'm gonna know immediately because there's n Lyle's not a common name and then I'm sitting there and he starts to pace and he goes Lyle Lyle crocodile and I'm like that that's my grandpa's name and then he's like good old grandpa Lyle and I'm like I rose my hand like I'm like that's me that's me, you know? And then he looks at me, he sees me and he goes, yes, you, I'm connected. Come down to the microphone. I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck. Like, ah. Oh. So I get down, I'm like hanging on for dear life to the thing, the railing, trying to get down there. And then I'm walking carefully. I get to the mic and I'm like, hi. And then he's like, thanks for being here. And I'm like, I came from Hanford. And he goes, you did awesome. There's other people here too. And I, he like points somewhere and then everyone like, a few crowd, a few people in the crowd were like, woo, so I'm all like, hi guys, like a little, like I was cool or something, whatever. I thought it was fun though, like I felt happy to have people from my hometown supporting me, even though I don't know if I knew them or not. Um, and then the first thing he mentioned was that I should inquire on Jerry Lee Lewis. Like I don't specifically know what that resembled, but like if I asked someone that they would know. So I was like, okay. And then I was even thinking like, crap, I don't have my phone on me. It's at the seat. And then I was like thinking to my friend, like text me that name. She, she did. She, we were there. She texted me the name. Right. And then, um, let me see. Oh, and then he went into how like my grandpa had a, a military burial, which he did. He had the flag, 21 gun salute, everything. And then um, he mentioned my grandma, <laughs> how how she kept keeps playing with us. Like she keeps having so many close calls. We think like that's it. We have to say our goodbyes. And then she's like, no, I'll 
fine. Like, duh, she just did that with COVID. So yeah, she just, you, if you know me, you know this is our story with grandma. <laughs> grandma keeps us on her toes. And then he mentioned like her lungs, which um, the COVID thing did give her this issue where the carbon dioxide just stays in her lungs and she doesn't get rid of it the way she's supposed to. So she has to use a, beep, a BiPAP machine. So I took that as an acknowledgement that she's doing good being on her BiPAP, like grandpa, grandpa approves, you know? And then, um, he also mentioned like, he doesn't want her to fall. He sees something with like her step, like stepping wrong. And then he was like, I see like a little step by the bed. And I'm like, cause when we were moving grandma into her, um, place that she's at now, her bed had a, has this flimsy little step next to it. Like one of those little collapsible folded ones. I don't like that step. I didn't like it and I didn't want it where it is. And I even mentioned it. I was like, why is that step there? That's weird. Like that step's not sturdy, you know? But anyway, so he said, careful about the step by the bed. So I'm like, all right, I'm relaying that to grandma because I've already felt it. And now you're confirming it. Yeah, grandma, watch that step. Right. <laughs> and then he did bring up my uncle and said something personal about my uncle. I'm not going to share that. And then, um, he mentioned cancer on my dad's side and I'm like, Fuck. like, cause if you guys know me, my stepdad, I call him my, my real dad. Like he's been the one that's been there for me and done everything for me. So that's my dad. And then, so I'm like, I don't want to, I was like scared that he meant him. And then I was like, do you mean something made me ask, do you mean my bio dad's side? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, okay. And the way he said yes, he like smiled like, yes, like a reassuring one. Like, don't worry not your dad that you're with it's this dad and his family like that it was he, he could tell I feel he could tell that I was worried it was my dad dad so um and yes my biological father had so much cancer in his body when he passed and my grandfather which is his father he also had like a form of leukemia I believe it was and then he had mel melanoma mel the skin cancer stuff so I was like okay and then um he did note that I'm intuitive too and that he can sense that I've sometimes been able to communicate or I've received messages or just like little synchronicities will happen that'll make me think, oh, hey, Gramps, what's up? Like, you know, um, and he said it in a way where like the crowd could understand what he meant, but also he like had this underlying tone that he could, he, like he was saying, I see you, like you're a fellow intuitive. Of course not at his level, but you know. So I thought that was cute. And then, um, this part is what killed me right here. You ready? And then right now I'm at 1254 on my video. 1254 represents my grandpa <laughs> to me because that's his old address. So of the house where like I grew up with him. So he's like, I'm getting like, and there's one more thing. I'm getting like a fluffy tail just... And then I just go, because, and he's just describing it. Like, I just see it like sauntering by and I'm like, those are the words that I use. You guys ready? My cat gizmo. I know if you know me, you know that I'm dying for my gizmo. Um, his passing was like so traumatic for me. I forgot that. Like I I've, was just talking about how I haven't had to experience a loss a really tough loss in a long time since I was a kid, but I forgot, um, about his passing. He, that one was traumatic for me. Horrible. But Gizmo would always follow me in the bathroom. And if I didn't let him in, or if I was like uh, in the bathroom and he caught wind of it, he'd be like <coughs> at the door, like obnoxious, meowing, <coughs> like sounds like he's breaking the door down, little brat. So then you let him in and you're all pissed at him like, hurry up, I gotta get ready. And then he's just like, with his little tail swishing, just all casually sauntering in. And I'm like, he used the words that I use to describe Gizmo when he does that. So I see Gizmo in the bathroom. Like I'll see his tail like swish over to the side, like just out of the corner of my eye, I'll see it. And I'll be like, <laughs> and then I have his ashes right there actually still. So that was freaking cool and like the whole crowd once i told once i was like i see my cat gizmo all the time and the crowd just gasped and i was like yeah yeah <laughs> um oh and 30 minutes about 30 minutes before i got called up 
I was just having this intense headache. It was the worst tension headache I've ever had. Like, I was, okay, I haven't told many people this, but I, I read tarot and I sometimes channel things and it is what it is, right? But my physical experience when I'm in this mindset and space I get tense like you know how some people get like when someone has a seizure they're like this I feel like that but like I'm a spider crunching in like everything's just like hunched together and just tense in my jaw like it's horrible so I was clenching I, I'm getting hot and sweaty right now thinking about this so um I was feeling like that and I'm like that's weird I usually only feel this way when I'm doing something so I'm like what's going on and I'm like it's so bad that I'm massaging my temples and I'm like down here like pulling my scalp and it's bad like it hurts and then back of my neck was hurting a lot on this side and I was like stretching like you can even ask my friend I was complaining about it during the show and then later on the way home I connected that to the fact that my grandpa had a stroke in this room I'm in his old room I live here alone but I'm in his old room he had a stroke in here. He coughed and a vein in the back of his neck popped and he had a, he had a, you know, a stroke. So of course that affects like your brain. And I figure that's why my head might've been hurting in the back of my neck. I don't know, but that was interesting. And then let's go back to the two thing, right? The 2222. Um, and the fact that it was the 22nd of the year, 2022. Um, my grandfather passed away December 31st, 2000. So what does that make? December will be how many years? Can you do the math for me? 22 years since my grandpa passed away. On 22, 22 is when he came to me. So, oh, and then we par we packed, okay. On the way home, my friend kind of lives on 9th Avenue and Sorry, my neighbor's doing something weird. But anyway, he, we drove by the garlic factory, right? The one out there on 198 and 9th Avenue by the Monday sale. And my grandpa hated garlic and me and grandma always talk about it and laugh about it because grandma loves garlic. Like you could just, like when she makes pot roast, she's just shoving garlic in there and sprinkling it. Like she's a garlic freak and garlic is good. But grandpa hated it, right? And so I'm telling my friend this story as we're passing the garlic factory. And then we turn onto the 9th Avenue and I see this pumpkin just smashed all over the road. And right, it was right after I just finished telling her, right? And I'm like, ew, gross. And then I'm like, oh, it's just a pumpkin. But then I'm like, wait a minute. It was as if grandpa was saying, ew, gross about the garlic. You know what I mean? Um... So yeah, that was just freaking nuts, man. Like, and there's more, there's a lot more like to it, but that was my experience. And then, okay. So the way Tyler connects to you, like you feel the, you feel the pull from right here. Like you lock the eyes and you just feel the pull. And then I, I felt like I was being kind of just like guided up there. Like, cause I was so nervous. I was shaky when I was standing up there. I was like this. And I was like hanging on so tight, like, and I was shaking, like I didn't want to be like this. So I was like this. And then my, I was leaning on my left side for the most part. And, um, my right foot was up a little bit and my foot was all, so I'm all like trying to stand like, but, um, and then there's like a monitor on both sides where you, if you get called to the microphone, they have a camera on you. So you're up on the screen so people can see what's going on. And I'm like, if I go up there, I'm going to, I'm going to be peeking at myself, but no, none of that happened. I was straight up just like in like me and Tyler, I could not quit looking at his eyes. Like I would go like this once in a while, but as soon as I was done, I would return my sight right back to him. Like I didn't care about what I looked like on the screen. I didn't care about the camera in front of me. I was just so in this bubble in this moment with Tyler. Like it was just us kind of in a way. And I could just feel that he was like in there and he was confirming shit that I've already known. And 
acknowledging things and it was just so cool and then I had my friend up there you know and I get back to my seat and I'm like well I'm just like fuck 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 and people are just laughing at me so I'm walking back up but like I get to my seat and my friend immediately I text you that name I'm like thank you you got my message I was I was hoping you would have you know so that was cool um and I was still complaining like my headache was so bad right before he called me after he called me I was it, it subsided a little bit enough to where I didn't have to be like oh but it was still just like god it hurts and so we get to the car I change into comfy stuff because it's time to go home and then I take whenever I have a headache like that's really bad what gets rid of it it's bad for your liver but I take two Aleve and two Excedrin two and two seriously I actually just noticed that right now <laughs> but that did make my headache go away um but then I felt the headache go away but then just out of nowhere we were kind of almost a pismo and then it was just like whew, like I felt clarity like a different kind of clarity than what I've been feeling so I mentioned that to her and then if you guys know me you know I've got sciatic issues and I have a knot that goes all the way down my leg to like my knee and then this side is starting that stuff too so anyway every time I'm on the car ride even if it's like a, tr a one hour trip I get up I have to be like oh I have to unfold and like it hurts no we got home around 2 in the morning right I got up like this and like even today it doesn't hurt to unfold and get up like it usually does. So I'm just like, what is going on? So Tyler must have definitely gone in there while we were talking and connecting and helped clear that up too. Who even knows? But that was so badass. Like the fact that I had plans because I've been so stressed with my new job. It's just been a lot to learn and I'm hard on myself. That's what it is. It's me being hard on myself. So this week was just crazy and I did accomplish one thing that was due by the end of yesterday before we moved out onto the floor with, you know, to our desks. Um, so I was proud of that, but like Friday I had every intention of sleeping in and doing nothing on Saturday and then just, just so happens my friend has tickets to some psychic and it's Tyler. And then at first she said it was at Chick Chansey, and I was like, cool, that's fine. And then she said Chumash, and I'm like, ew, three hours on a Saturday? It's at 8 o'clock. We'd have to leave, like, in the afternoon, and we'll be home late. Ugh. And then I was like, no. Something's like, no, we, I, I got to go. I have to go. And it has to be her that goes with me. Um, so, yeah. And then <laughs> what's funny is we were going to leave at 3. We were going to leave at 3. No. We were going to leave at three and then we're like, well, let's go earlier so we can have time to eat and, you know, find where we're at. So we decided one o'clock and then my friend the night before was still feeling a little weird. So I'm like, let's move it to two, <laughs> two, let's move it to two, you know, so you have an extra hour to relax, hang out, whatever. And I'm down for an extra hour of resting too. Right. And then, um, so yeah. And then just the trip there was beautiful. Everything about yesterday was perfect okay even the traffic y'all know me with <laughs> traffic that was even easy on the way to the coast on a Saturday in the middle of the afternoon traffic was fine and then on the way home like I just all the way home like no no one was in my way no one there was not even like an incident where someone almost caused an accident usually every trip I go on there's some dummy that has to almost kill us this one was fine like no stress it was all good vibes the whole way there we were just listening to music talking about it talking about other stuff you know we just good conversation it was everything about yesterday was perfect oh and then the last thing I forgot to mention I didn't even write this down did I no I did not oh I did but I missed it so at one point in the show at the very end he was like he was like, you're here for a reason. Like these coincidences that line up like this. Um, and he starts talking about something and I go, Hey, look, Matt. I go, Hey, look, my tattoo says no coincidences, only synchronicities. That's like my tagline. There are no coincidences. There are only synchronicities. They're meant to happen or they're planned. 
it's not like a it's not like a whoa that's weird like no that was meant to happen it, it's meant to grab your attention to either show you something or tell you something or it's just you you're in the right place at the right time and it's just confirmation about it right but anyway show her my tattoo because he said that about coincidences and then um I turn around to go listen to him again and he goes it's a, those are actual actually synchronicities they're meant to happen and I'm just like was I not just saying this <laughs> so yeah but look I'll show y'all because this this symbol means synchronicity which it's like my favorite word but people kept asking me are you an Aquarius and I'm like no I'm a Capricorn right so I'm like let me have my tattoo guy put that over it so they'll know it's a synchronicity and he fucking quoted it <laughs> he quoted it I've had that tagline on my Twitter and my Facebook there are no coincidences only synchronicities it's tattooed on me and he quoted it so that's my experience with Tyler Henry and yeah that was just I mean I believed in him already but this just was icing on the cake man and the fact that he's from Hanford too um he makes us proud because <laughs> you know Hanford's not always known for the best things I mean we're known for being a cow town and then people act like cow poo so the fact that you know Tyler's from there I went from here to there and then there was other people from Hanford supporting like and my friend that I'm so spiritually close to like oh, it was so perfect like I'm still reeling over it <laughs> and then of course there's people that doubt I understand and appreciate your guys's concern and stuff but like I just look at it like we all have our own ways of dealing with things of learning things of experiencing things of living our lives and I'm not here to judge anybody's ways so it would be awesome if people wouldn't wouldn't judge me but if you do oh well I'm still not gonna care I'm safe I protect myself um, and I have no ill will toward anybody I do what I do to help people and I'm starting to kind of embrace it so I might get weird over the next few however many whatever's you don't vibe with it that's fine I understand but if you do hold space for me to be myself and share my gifts um that's awesome as fuck too like uh, my goal is to love everybody and be loved back like i mean of course it's not like i'm not gonna go like to my ex and be like oh i still love you like no it's not like that it's just like i have love for everybody out here like that's the point you know tyler said it best we are all water drops on this earth and when we pass away we mesh into this ocean this deep ocean and so I'm like well yeah and then also look I wore a cat shirt I almost grabbed my creek fire shirt but I grabbed the cat one instead because of gizmo and then look the tail <laughs> so yeah thank you for listening um that was wild I appreciate all the support and excitement and I hope this helps people too even like who knows so love you guys